Hello, and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting and all the other crafty things that I get up to. Uh, hi, and welcome to this episode. Um, today's kind of a special episode because I am celebrating my first year of podcasting. Um, my very first podcast went online on the 26th of September, 2020. So it's been one year since I started and I'm so delighted to be um, here with you. I'm so happy that so many of you have been joining me um, on my shows. So thank you, thank you for coming back. Thank you for uh, giving me a chance if you're new and welcome to my show. Uh, today we're going to be talking about some uh, a finished object, a couple of works in progress, some books, some uh, planned gift knitting, and um, I have a little surprise for you at the end of the episode. So stick around uh, and grab yourself something cozy and let's get started. So um, a couple of housekeeping things. So I don't know if you've noticed, but I've noticed. Um, I am 45 years old. I'm not afraid to say it. And I am definitely going gray, uh, as you can see. Those aren't highlights. That's gray, my friends. And I've decided to just embrace it. Um, for a long time, I would dye my hair varying shades of ready brown, brown, light brown, medium brown, rose gold was a popular one for a while, but um, I'm tired of it. <laughs> I'm 45 years old and I've decided to embrace the sparkle. So if you notice me getting even more sparkly as episodes continue, um, it's on purpose. Let's go with that. Um, I'm also happy to say that I have a new recording device. Um, my old phone, which was an, an older model, um, the microphone just stopped working and I could use the phone with AirPods, but I couldn't record a podcast with AirPods. It was very um, annoying. So I'm very happy to say that in the last couple of weeks, I have a new phone that I'm playing with. Um, today's my first day recording with it and I hope that um, it brings a little something to the podcast. I hope that it's um, at least watchable <laughs> and enjoyable. Um, so if you notice a different look, um, it's probably because of my new recording device. Or maybe you're just distracted by all my gray hair. Either way, I'm glad you're here. I have a finished object to share with you today. And uh, that is my bundled in Brios brioche scarf. This is a scarf I've been working on for my husband. Um, it is a pattern by Stephen West. It's a free pattern. And I think it's a really great introduction to brioche in general, but specifically to color brioche. If you've never done brioche knitting, I think that using two colors is a great way to learn because it's really easy to see what you're doing when you're using two different colors. And uh, the result is a fabulous scarf. I used two colors. Steven in his pattern uses nine that he alternates. Um, so this side, um, the darker side is cowboy and the lighter side is the color cosmos. I used Malabrigo Rios. Um, I loved using this yarn. It was really great. It's a worsted weight. I used about a ball and a half and my scarf in the end uh, is 60 inches long, which um, I had read in various places was kind of a good length um, for a man scarf. And occasionally I would try it on my husband to see if it was a good length to kind of wrap around his neck. Um, and so we settled on this length. I'm really happy with it. It's quite gushy. It's a decent width. Um, there's nothing worse than a scarf that is too skinny. Um, and I don't actually, I'm going to insert the width of the actual width of this scarf here. I haven't measured it, but this is what my finished project looks like. And I'm really happy with it. I love, um, I love that it's sort of like reversible. So one side is definitely darker and one side is definitely lighter. The instructions, <coughs> excuse me, the instructions for this pattern were great. Um, if, this is one of Stephen West's earlier patterns and um, 
from the cast on to doing the two color brioche to um, the bind off, really, really great instructions, very clear, simple and straightforward. And so I would recommend it if you're looking to try two color brioche. I would also recommend it if you are um, looking for a gift knit for a man in your life or a scarf for a man in your life or really anyone in your life. Stephen's pattern uses up bits of um, worsted weight yarn. And so because I have two half balls left, I had been thinking that I would like to make a matching hat for my husband on that note. Um, I recently was watching a podcast by Andrea Mowry and she mentioned that one of her very popular brioche hats, the Harlow hat, which is two color brioche, she was working on making a worsted weight version. And so I thought, if I have enough yarn, I think I'd like to make my husband a worsted weight brioche hat to go with his scarf. Um, so that's my future planning. But if I don't, then I have some worsted weight left over that I can make another scarf, um, more in keeping with Stephen's original sort of color changing scarf. He used nine in his, and his finished scarf was something like 98 inches long, so really, quite a substantial scarf. I don't know that I would make it that long, but I like the idea of playing with color um, and switching it up throughout. So that may be something I keep in mind for the leftovers from this project. So I have a couple of um, works in progress that I have been chugging along with that I'd like to share with you today. Um, the first one is my pavement sweater. Now this sweater, I know, you're probably tired of hearing about it. I started this pattern in June. It's all tangled up on my progress keeper. There we go. Um, I started this project in June and I kind of would work on it and then put it away and work on it and put it away. And so finally in this last week, I um, picked it up and was working on it and making much more um, progress. It's funny how when you work on something, you see progress the weirdest thing anyway so I started um, this is a top-down sweater it has very sort of interesting saddle shoulder um, features and I knit the whole body again I have been um, using helical knitting to um, alternate my skeins and I think I think that I've gotten really good um, sort of color disbursement is that the right word? My my speckles are even are even. My speckles are even. So I'm quite happy with that. This sweater has sort of a, a bit of a, a shirt tail um, feature. It uses um, short rows to lengthen the front and the back, where the sides come up a little bit still. And um, so I finished all of that, and I finished the garter edging. Now garter edging, not my favorite. Um, just because it takes so long, doesn't it? Um, every ridge, um, because it's sort of stacked up and kind of short, it seems to take forever. There, gonna brighten me up a little bit. So um, the garter, the two inches of garter hem took a little longer than I would have liked, but I'm really happy um, with how it looks. And this last week I was um, able to start one of the sleeves. So I have this much of the sleeve done it's just sort of, um, it's in, I find that the construction of the sweater is quite interesting. Um, you can see that the sweater just sort of um, grows out of that little um, saddle shaping and it's really, really um, a pretty look. Um, I've only got this much done. I have been continuing to do helical knitting on the sleeves and uh, there are some decreases, but the sleeves are only 12 inches, I think, before I do a bit of a hem. So I think they will go quickly and I'm hoping to have this done soon so I can wear it. Um, partly because it's just been on the needles for so long and isn't it nice to finally finish something that you've been looking at for several months. Um, it's not like me to have a, a project on the needles for so long. A sweater anyway. Um, we won't talk about my granny stripe blanket that I haven't picked up in months. I kind of knew that was going to Anyway, um, sleeve one, I am using some 12 inch circular needles. Um, I had been using magic loop. I've been magic looping a lot lately. Just again, 
not necessarily my go-to, but I have been doing it, um, partly because it's a skill I kind of want to build so that I'm, I'm more confident with it or better at it. But I found, I was doing that on the sleeve and I found it just sort of um, slow. So I, I put the sleeve on a 12 inch circular. Um, I have several of these 12 inch circulars. They only um, come in certain sizes. And that is because um, the needle tip itself, if I pull this out a little bit, you can see the needle tip is quite short. And so with a short needle tip like that, you can't really um, get a very large um, needle size. So I think the biggest they go up to is maybe five and a half millimeter, possibly six millimeter, because um, with the taper of the needle and then the taper down to the cable, there just isn't enough room to have um, a decent needle in this length. So um, I have several of these 12 inch needles that I like to use for um, sleeves primarily. I sometimes use them for other fiddly little things, but mostly it's sleeves. Um, and certainly in the past I have done DPNs and I've also done uh, Magic Loop, but I find with my 12 inch Cirque, I can just uh, go round and round and round uh, and I get a much better flow. And also you don't get any ladders because it's so tiny. So anyway, there's my pavement. It's actually finally making some progress. Uh, I'm quite happy with how it's turning out and I really like the yarn that I picked. And I, I'm quite glad that I did helical knitting because I'm getting a nice, even um, speckle distribution. And hopefully I will be able to finish that sweater in the next little while. And then it won't be on my needles anymore. I can wear it in this nice cozy sweater weather that we're having here in Edmonton. The next project I have on the needles um, was uh, a something I cast on in this last week and that is um, the fluorite socks. This is a pair of socks that I have knit in the past more than once it turns out. I was going through my Ravelry um, project list and I have actually made this pattern more than once um, but I've never knit it as written. Do you ever do you ever do that? Um, this pattern is uh, a pair of toe-up knee-high socks written by Andrea Mowry, and they were in an issue of Palm Palm Quarterly um, that I bought specifically for this pattern. And um, every time I knit them, I knit them like as written, except Andrea Mowry has the toe, the heel, um, the toe and the heel in stocking stitch, and the rest of the sock in reverse stocking stitch, which means it's stocking stitch, but the pearl side facing out. Um, I have gone with my usual stocking stitch sock. One day I will knit that pattern as written, but currently, well, today is not that day. I'm using the Hydrangea Frenzy sock yarn from Ginger Snap that I picked up at the Prairie Fiber Festival about a month ago. And this is how my socks are looking. Now, check out the, the fade on these. So this starts with this really sort of olivey green and um, it flows and it flows up. Um, and it, as you can see here uh, where I'm at now, it's starting to become a little bit more pinky. I had started knitting these socks on 2.25 millimeter needles, which is sort of my usual go-to sock needle. In spite of the pattern asking for 2.5 millimeter needles, I thought, well, this is my usual, so I'm gonna go with that. But um, I got to a certain point and I was having some really weird pooling that I wasn't loving. Um, so I switched, I, I frogged it back, I switched to 2.5 millimeter needles, and um, I still am getting a little bit of sort of weird pooling through here, but it's not as bad as it was. And it's sort of um, not corrected itself, but it's just stopped that weird sort of pooling action. So this is the top side of the sock and I have just inserted a heel. The Frenzy sock kit comes with 250, well, the one that I got, comes with 250 gram balls that gradiate from this olive green. And it's going to, um, it's going to keep uh, changing color until we get to that deep purple in the middle there, which is really cool. And it comes with 
one contrast stain that is about 25 grams I measured it in this color which is sort of a really deep uh, vibrant purple so I threw in a purple heel um, partly because it's a purple heel that's pretty cute and partly because I didn't want the gradient on the top side of the sock to be interrupted so I didn't want there to be like a line right here where it it changed abruptly now it it may that may or may not have happened because the gradient in this sock is really gradual um but i i threw in the purple heel just in case this um the heel is written as it's a short row heel it's written as the pattern uh stated and now i'm just knitting up the leg of the sock i have this much yarn I don't know how much that is. I haven't weighed it, but I'm really hoping that um, I can use up as much of this gradient as I can before I get to the ribbing at the top. And if I need to use this for the ribbing, I'm happy to do that. This is the, um, the skein for the other sock. So this is about a 50 gram skein, and this is where I'm at in this skein. Um, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping the leg uses up quite a bit of this yarn and aren't they going to be a really pretty pair of socks i'm so excited um it's it's sort of rare for me to buy yarn and cast it on right away um particularly sock yarn because i mean i have so much sock yarn to choose from um that i don't always reach for the first one that i picked but this was so pretty that i really just wanted to work it up so this is the frenzy sock yarn by ginger snap she does half sets as well, where the skein is 20, um, the gradient skein is 25 grams, and it comes with a contrasting color for heels, toes, and cuffs, if you like. Um, and this is the full skein, so each of these is 50 grams. And the reason I got the full skein, to be honest, was that she didn't have any more of the minis yet left, because this color was so beautiful and popular that it had sold out. Um, totally understandable. It's beautiful. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this sock progresses. And to be honest, I've been knitting on them a lot because it's just so pretty watching the colors come, come across the needles. Um, Ginger Snap also has some really interesting um, gradients similar to this in different weights. She has something called the Pixel, which um, is similar to this also in a worsted weight yarn. So um, lots of options. If you're interested and you like it, check out Ginger Snap That. Ginger Snap That, she has an Etsy shop. I will link it in my notes um, if you want to support a somewhat local to me fiber artist. I would support you supporting her. Um, and that is all the projects I have on the needles at the moment, but I have plans. Um, and I think before I get to plans, I'd like to have a little segment. We have, we have segments now. I've been podcasting for a year, so we have segments now. Um, I would like to introduce a little segment called Jolene Reads A Lot. Hello, and welcome to Jolene Reads A Lot. Um, before Jolene knit a lot, Jolene used to read a lot. Um, and I was a reader from a young age. I read um, all sorts of books. Um, I really like to read about knitting. Um, and I thought that when books came across my path that I really enjoyed, I, I, I would share them with you in my podcast here. Um, and for now, I thought I'd stick to books about knitting. But if you're interested in whatever I'm reading, um, let me know. Let me know in the comments below and I can certainly talk about um, really good books that I come across um, in my uh, in my reading, my everyday reading. Um, I know sometimes I come across uh, really excellent books that uh, move me or that I'm, I get excited about or that stay with me after I've finished reading them. So if you are interested in hearing about the books that stay with me, that resonate with me, that um, I think about after I've closed the last page, uh, let me know. I'd be happy to talk 
to you about them every once in a while when I come across a book like that. Um, but for now, I wanted to talk about two books uh, about knitting. They are both relatively new books. They were both published this year. And um, one of them is pattern book and one of them is a reading book. So the first one I wanted to talk about is a book called Unraveling Canada, A Knitting Odyssey. This is a, a new book by Sylvia Olson. Sylvia Olson is quite well known in Canada um, as a knitting designer, but also um, as someone who sort of uh, just is very knowledgeable about the history of knitting in Canada. She has written other books. Her other book um, that you may have heard about is called Working with Wool, A Coast Salish Legacy and the Cowichan Sweater. The Cowichan Sweater is um, the one, is one of um, a few knitting styles um, that are very um, Canadian. They are, they originated here and they are um, Canadian. It, it, they're the thing that tourists, when they come to particularly Western Canada, the West Coast of Canada, um, they look for um, a Cowichan sweater. Um, I'll maybe pop a picture of one here. They're very West Coast Canadian. Um, and so Sylvia Olson um, is both a very well-known knitter, but also um, very knowledgeable in the knitting history of Canada. And so this is a book about um, knitting in the knitting history of Canada, knitting in various areas of Canada. Um, and the way it's organized is as a cross country trip. So she starts in British Columbia, which is on the west coast of Canada. Um, she travels through Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, which are the prairies here in Alberta or in Canada. She keeps going through Ontario and Quebec, um, which is sort of central to Eastern Canada, then our maritime provinces, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island and Newfoundland. Um, I am looking forward to jumping into this book. There isn't a lot uh, written about Canadian knitting and the history of knitting in Canada. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to reading something um, that is local and close to home. Now, I, I realize that this is a book about knitting and I haven't read this book yet, but I wanted to share it with you because it's brand new and it's something I'm excited about. So this, uh, this book is something that I am going to be picking up very soon. And um, when I'm done it, I'm gonna tell you all about it. The other book that I wanted to tell you about um, that has come across, again, another Canadian, um, not a Canadian publication, but two Canadian um, designers who happen to be twins. This is a book called Moon and Turtle. Moon and Turtle is um, published by Pom Pom Press. Yes, Pom Pom Press in London. But these two twins are from uh, Ontario. They, they're very, they're beautiful. They're very interesting. Um, I was reading about them and I think that they are mirror image twins, which means one of them has the organs on the other side of their body. Isn't that incredible? I love science. Um, anyway, this book is written by Sashiko and Kiyomi Bergen. They're twin hand knit designers from Toronto, Canada. And this book is a gift to, to knitters, um, particularly people who <clears throat> want to knit for many people in their lives. So the patterns in this book are written for everyone. Um, they are modeled by, here's an example of a great stripy sweater. I love that they show different sizes and different variations. Um, for this, for example, this striped sweater shows a short sleeve version and um, a, a longer sleeve crop version. They show it on a man and a woman. Um, and so I think that this pattern book is a great option for knitting for anyone in your life. The styles, um, here's a great cardigan. The styles I think are great for anyone. You would find something that you like in this book. There's a few patterns that I'm really intrigued by. This one is called Polka Polka. It's a hat and it is knit in both fingering and um, like a fuzzy yarn, like a mohair. Um, now, I'm not a fan of mohair, but I do love some alpaca. And so that is something that I think I'm going to be knitting up at some point. Um, it's, it's sort of an inside out hat, so it's two layers um, and you can wear it with the fuzzy side out or the um, smooth side out. There's a beautiful shawl, which um, is one color, 
I don't know if I'm going to uh, partake in the shop, but these socks are quite lovely. They're called the Zener socks or Zener socks. Um, and I really like them for a colorful sock. I really like this cable sweater. If you can see it, it's both a cardigan and a pullover. There's so many beautiful, beautiful sweaters. And like I said, the patterns in this book are for anyone. Um, there's a beautiful yoked sweater, color yoke sweater. And the great thing about this pattern book is they show you some different color options. So if you have a hard time picking options, they show you some swatches in different color variations so that you might envision something that is more uh, in line with your style. The one thing that I really want to cast on is this pattern. It's called Looski and it's a, a hood uh, with an optional face warmer. And I thought that this would be great for skiing. And then my older daughter said, that'd be good for walking the dog. And she's absolutely right. So um, this pattern book written by um, some really beautiful Canadian designers is full of patterns for just about anyone in your life. Um, accessories, sweaters. Um, I'm really excited to cast on the hood and the socks. So um, both of these books I have purchased. Um, I'm not sponsored in any way. If anyone wants to sponsor me, I'd be, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. But uh, I'm not currently sponsored. And so these two are both books that I have picked up and have been enjoying leafing through in the case of Moon and Turtle and excited to read um, very soon. So that, my friends, is my very first episode of Jolene Reads A Lot. Stay tuned for future episodes. And uh, let me know if you want to hear about uh, books that I'm reading um, in my everyday life. And I look forward to giving you a full review of this. Uh, very soon. Bye. Well, uh, welcome back from Jolene Reads a Lot. <laughs> um, I hope that's a segment that I can keep up um, every once in a while, um, just as I find interesting books that I want to share with you. So thanks uh, for uh, putting up with my new segment. Um, and maybe that is a great way to segue into my next segment. Um, we're a year old, we have segments now. Um, so I don't know about you, but I knit for other people a fair amount. And especially at this time of year, um, my family celebrates Christmas. And so I often, um, do Christmas knitting, but, um, I don't think that gifts have to be just for Christmas. I mean, you can give people gifts of your knitted um, projects at any time of the year for birthdays um, or just because. And I think that gift knitting is something that a lot of knitters do and a lot of knitters are interested. So I thought I would have a new segment um, about some of the things that I like to gift um, as a knitter. And this segment is called Jolene Gifts A Lot. Hello, and welcome to Jolene Gifts A Lot. Um, this segment is something I've been thinking about um, the last little while as um, a sort of big gift giving holiday is approaching. Um, most knitters I know like to knit for other people. And so um, I thought that I would share with you some ideas of, of knits that I am thinking about making for the people in my life, um, including the dog who's barking a lot this, this week. Um, I'm sorry about that. So, um, I have a few patterns that I'm interested in knitting for gifts and I thought I would share them with you if you were looking for ideas for gift knitting as well. Um, as this segment grows, I'll probably share some of the things that I have already made, but I think it, sometimes it's nice to hear some ideas of what we can give to other people. Um, because, uh, knitting plain socks is great. Who doesn't love a great pair of knitted socks? But sometimes it's nice to have some new things to knit as a knitter. And sometimes it's nice to have some ideas for the different people in your life. So um, as you may have heard in Jolene Reads a Lot, I got a new book and it has a couple of really great patterns in it that I think would make great gifts this year um, or really anytime. So the first pattern is called Lewski. 
Looski is this loose hood. It has a drawstring across um, the face. You can snug it up and it comes with an optional face warmer or face shield. Um, this pattern to me makes a lot of sense as a gift, um, particularly where I live because it's quite cool. It, uh, maybe I can show you a picture. Oh, here. Um, this model is wearing it just around his neck and he's tucked the hood behind him. And I think that's great um, for cooler weather to be able to um, lift the hood on and off, kind of like a hoodie under your jacket. Um, yeah. I think it'd be great for skiing. I think it'd be great for walking my dog. And so um, this loose ski pattern by from the Moon and Turtle um, book is definitely on my gift knitting list. Um, and I could see myself knitting it for myself, my husband, um, possibly my brother who has a couple, well, a dog that he walks a lot, um, and maybe for the skiers in my life. So my plan is to knit one and see how it wears um, and if it's going to be good for skiing or not, it's going to depend on the fit. If it's if it's snug enough to wear with a helmet, um, it may be something I can wear for skiing. And if not, I think it'd be great for dog walking. So regardless, it looks like a great pattern. The next um, pattern that's on my gift knitting list is also from Moon and Turtle. And it's these Zenner socks. I think they're really pretty. And I love that they use different colors. And... Um, I know as a knitter of socks, I often have small balls of yarn left over um, in various colors. And I think that a sock like that would be a great way to use up some of those small um, bits and bobs um, to make some pretty socks for um, some people in my life. So the Zenner socks from Moon and Turtle are on my uh, gift knitting list. Another pair of socks that I'm really interested in knitting are the Little Boxes socks. This is a pattern by Summer Lee. Um, they're super cute. They're shorty socks in color work. Again, a great way, I think, to use up odds and ends of um, balls of a tonal yarn or a monochromatic yarn. I plan on using some of the John Arbin Exmoor sock yarn that I have um, that I picked up. I picked up a whole bunch of different colors and I think that that would be the perfect yarn for these socks. Um, I have some leftover from a sweater I made my mom, and I have some other bright colors that I picked up when I was trying to decide what colors to make her sweater in. And so I'm looking forward to making some colorful little shorty socks. Um, I found that the socks I made last year for my daughters, uh, they like to wear around the house when it was cold. And I think some color work socks, again, might be a, a great gift. Um, they're shorties, so they hopefully won't take too long to knit. Um, so that is another um, pattern that's going on my gift knitting list this year, the Little Boxes Socks by Summer Lee. And if you like these socks, check out her whole pattern line because Summer Lee has got some great color work and um, stripey and um, solid colored socks. Check out her, um, her whole line of patterns. She's got some great bundles um, and uh, I think that she's got some great ideas for sock knitting. Um, next on my list of gift knitting is hats. I think hats are um, always in demand where I live because it's cold. And um, Maxime Cyr of Boutique Les Garçons has come out with a great pattern this year. It's called the Hat and Peak Hat. This is a hat that matches the um, Hide and Peak sweater, colorwork yoke sweater, um, which I plan on knitting for my husband. Um, but if you have some leftover um, sport weight yarn. This, or DK, I think would work very nicely also. This would be a great pattern to make um, for the people in your life. Also, I think that it would be a great beginner color work pattern. So um, check out Hat and Peak by Boutique Les Garçons as a hat for the loved ones in your life. There are um, a few different sizes, and so you have some choices about um, what size you'd like to make for the people in your life. And finally, the last gift that I have on my sort of knitting radar is not knit. It is um, a beautiful cross stitch pattern. Now, you know, I've been getting into cross stitch lately. <coughs> and um, recently, Isolde and Junebug and Darlin came up with a collaboration um, cross stitch project uh, that I think is just lovely. So this is what it looks like. Um, again, it's going to be um, 
a fairly large project. It's knit, it's um, knit. It's not knit. It is cross stitched um, on a 10 inch hoop. So it's fairly large. It's similar to the You Are Enough project that I made by Junebug and Darlin. And when I was looking at this project, um, I, I mean, I got super excited about it because I think it's so pretty and I think it'd make a nice gift for the knitters in my life. But I'll be honest, the colors in it weren't quite right for me. Um, and it got me thinking, as knitters, we change the colors of our projects all the time. It's very, very rare for me to knit a project in the color and yarn that the design calls for. Like I, I am almost always substituting yarn and or color. So when it came to finding the threads for this, um, beautiful cross stitch project it just occurred to me that I could just mix it up now do other cross stitchers do this do you do you swap colors um is that just something that I think that I should do because I'm a knitter and I do it all the time anyway that's what I'm doing I have picked up some yarn to make this project for myself and then possibly for other people in my life um but I thought I'd just show you the little bundle of threads that I have picked up here they are. Now the colors don't vary too greatly from the ones in the, what is the best way to show threads? Let's go with that. Um, the colors don't vary greatly from the ones in the, in the pattern, but they do vary. Um, I picked a more cherry red. I picked a, a more baby kind of sky blue. Um, maybe that's the best way to show you. This is new cameras, really trippy. Um, anyway, I look forward to starting this pattern soon and I hope that um, it turns out with my um, color variation. I think it will. And um, so this is something that I'm thinking about making for the knitters in my life. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, so this is called Knitter. It is a cross stitch pattern by Junebug and Darlin. They Junebug and Darlin did have kits available on their website. Um, I know they sold out quickly because obviously it's a beautiful pattern. And um, although I, you can buy the kit, which has all the original yarns, you can also just buy a PDF of the pattern, which is what I did. And in my very um, anal way, <laughs> my very um, organized way, let's go with that, I put the uh, pattern in a paper protector. And so I've got um, everything I need in this little um, paper protector. Um, they send you all of the instructions that you would have gotten in a kit. Um, so not only the the chart for the cross stitch, but also the instructions for how to finish your project, um, how to do various stitches if those are required, um, and just some finishing techniques and tips. Because I've already had kits by Junebug and Darlin, I have that information um, already printed out that I got in my kit. So um, I just got the PDF and I printed out the chart. I got myself some um, a beautiful little bouquet of, of threads that you saw. Um, I have needles already that I got in various different kits. So I'm, I'm really ready to go. All I needed to do was pick up some um, cross stitch Ada cloth, which is easy to find in craft stores. Um, and a 10 inch um, embroidery hoop, which again is not difficult to find. I got um, some the, some of the Ada cloth in Walmart. Um, and then I ended up also seeing some in Michael's and um, both of those places also had the 10 inch um, embroidery hoops. So they're not hard to find. Um, and they're, they're not necessarily a high priced item either. So once you have, um, the threads, which are not reasonably inexpensive. I think that I paid 73 cents for a skein of thread. So I think that purchasing um, the individual pieces may be a bit more economical than buying the kit, um, but, but um, the kit does come with everything that you need all in one place, which is kind of nice too. So um, you do you. Maybe you already have um, some of these things at home and you don't need to buy the whole kit. Or maybe you're new to cross stitch and you'd like to just have everything at once. Both options are open to you. But the knitter cross stitch is something that's going on my gift knitting, my gifting, my craft gifting. What do we call this? Hmm. 
anyway um so those are some of the things that i'm mulling around in my brain um as gifts that i'd like to make for the people in my life um how about you do you have any great gift ideas is there something you always knit every year or um are there some things on your radar that you're excited to to gift to knit as gifts i think the shift cowl would be a great gift um and i say that because i've made some for gifts <laughs> um so I highly recommend the shift cowl pattern. It's a bit smaller than this big shawl um, with all of the pleasing color work. So um, if that's something you're interested in, I also recommend that. Uh, and this has been an episode of Jolene Gifts A Lot. Come back for future episodes where I maybe show you some of the things that I have um, made to gift or some new pro um, patterns or ideas that I have for um, giving to the people in your life. Welcome back. How do you like my new segments? Uh, they may or may not be a feature of future uh, episodes. Uh, let me know what you think. I um, I definitely read a lot. Um, and I think that sharing some of the books that I read is something that I have been meaning to incorporate in my podcast. And um, it won't be a regular thing because it, it can take me a while to read. Lately, every time I go to read at night, I find that I can read a little bit and then my eyes are closing and then that's that's it. So um, sometimes I read more than others, but when I come across something I'd like to share with you, it could be that you see that segment again. Um, also, uh, for the gift knitters out there, um, I think Jolene Gifts A Lot might be something that you see uh, somewhat regularly in this run up to the holiday season. Um, just to give you ideas of the things that I like to make, or if I see patterns that I come across that I think would make great uh, gift knitting. I'd like to share those with you. Um, so we've come to the end of this, my anniversary episode. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, as a way of saying thank you to all of you who um, have found me either very recently or from the beginning, I wanted to share um, a little prize with you. So this skein of mustache yarn in the apple picking colorway with an accompanying skein of Shubi's Metropolis in the Warsaw colorway. This prize is so exciting. My dog had to come here about it. Um, these two prizes could be going out to you if you um, are the lucky viewer. Um, for this giveaway, I would like for you to uh, like and subscribe to my channel and leave a comment um, on this video. Uh, that's my plan. If you comment and like this video, I will be choosing a uh, prize winner before my next um, episode, which I will be filming in two weeks. Um, I'm going to put the deadline date for commenting right here. Um, the reason I wanna have this on my channel is because I want you, my viewers, people who actually watch this show um, and stick with me and support me um, to the, be the ones benefiting from this giveaway. So please um, like this video, subscribe to this channel and make a comment below and you could be in for a chance to win these two skeins of yarn. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I really appreciate you coming by and listening and um, commenting and um, just um, being um, a part of my knitting community. So thank you so much. Um, I hope in the next couple of weeks you find time to read, um, to knit, to craft, to cross stitch, to do the things that you like to do. I know I plan on knitting a lot. Thank you so much and I will see you soon.